Welcome to AP Workshops, welcome to another one of our tech videos. Today we're going to show you a little bit about how to go around diagnosing a non-start on your bike. Welcome back to AP Workshops. Welcome back to another one of our tech videos. So what we're gonna do is basically, I'm going to show you what we do how, when, we try to, um, when we try to diagnose a non-start on a bike. So this is Amber's bike. This one's been standing around for about 10 years. So basically this one is, uh, is, is, not, is, is a non-starter at this particular point in time. Um, if we turn it on and we try turning it over, it doesn't start. So we turn the ignition on. So nothing, um, we've got nothing on the dashboard, we've got no fault codes on the dashboard, we've got nothing. So basically we've got nothing, it's a non-start. This is, um, I'm gonna try and simplify this as much as possible. So if I kind of stumble a little bit, bear with me on this one because uh, normally this is a little bit of an operation that goes on in my head. Uh, when you're sort of sat on a bench and working on a bike in front of you. But I'm going to try and simplify this as much as possible. Uh, and what I'm going to try and do is try and sort of relay that to you. So, so bear with me a moment on this one and bear with me for a second. But um, effectively what we're trying to do is, uh, this is the situation. Imagine you're away, been away for winter, the bike's been sat there, no problems. You've put the bike back onto the, uh, put the battery back onto the bike and, uh, and effectively you've got this situation where you turn the key on, non-start. The situation is we see this an awful lot on the phone. People are ringing up asking for a little bit of help. That's not a problem, but you're ringing up asking for a little bit of help um, and you don't know what to do. So what I'm gonna do is ask you to come and watch this video, see what we do, see how it is to see if we can help you in this one and in this way. So this is the situation. Your bike needs four things to make it run. If you ring us up with the answer to these four questions, then we can go further. Friend. You can find a friend. Effectively, what we need to do is to look for spark. We need to test to see whether the fuel pump works when you turn the ignition on, to see whether the fuel pump works when you try cranking the bike. Okay, and we need to make sure you've got fuel injection. So this video is to help you start on your diagnostic routine. So say for example, these are the four parts that you need. We need spark, fuel pump, fuel pump on cranking, and we need fuel injection. This is how you test for all of these parts. If you get stuck and you've got the answer to these four questions, if we obviously, if we haven't got a spark, we know we're looking for a spark problem. If we haven't got fuel pump or fuel pump running, we know we've got a spark, we've got to start looking for a fuel pump problem. And then basically, if we haven't got fuel injection, we know we're looking for a fuel injection issue. This is how you test all four of these parts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to check is that we've got fuel injection. So what we'll check in, we're going to use what's known as an LED tester. So effectively, this is a voltage tester that uses LEDs to tell you whether we've got 12 volts or not, okay? Uh, bulb testers will work, but they're not as accurate, or in this particular instance, as an LED tester. You can buy these from places like um, Halfords or, or sort of um, Pet Boys, depending on where you are in the UK, uh, or whether you're in the, the States, or, or whether, but kind of your local motor factors or spare, spare parts and accessories places. So literally all it is is a 12 volt tester. So what we're looking for is a 12 volt switch signal to the fuel injector. The fuel injector is on the side of the throttle bodies. So if we disconnect this, disconnect this block connector, in order for us to be able to test this block connector, we're going to bridge out this. So I've just put a little bit of lock wire into this. I've just slid that in like that. Then I've got the other side. So I'm making a bridge across across the actual block connector like this. Then I'm going to turn the ignition on and then I'm going to crank. And what I'm expecting to see is the ECU switching the fuel injector so we know that the fuel injector is working. So one of these lights, when we crank, 
we'll switch it, we'll, uh, switch it on and what'll happen is it should flash. If it doesn't flash, we've got a problem. If it does flash, we know we're getting fuel injection. So let's crank it and see what we got. <laughs> So we have got that flash signal. If you can see here, we've got that little flash signal. There you go. So we know we've got fuel injection. So that's one test done. On to the uh, spark test next. Okay, so the next test, we're going to test to see whether the, um, whether the engine is getting a spark. So we've tested, for, uh, uh, we, we've tested for fuel injection. We're gonna now test for a spark. So the way to test for a spark can be a little bit interesting. So you have got to use a little bit of caution. But these are the spark plugs here, spark plug caps. We're gonna remove one of the spark plug caps. We're going to fit a spare spark plug. Okay, so we're gonna fit a spare spark plug. And then what we're going to do is rest the spark plug against the engine block. Okay, now if you touch this, when you push that button, you will get a shock and you will know about it. So be careful. So if you can, rest the spark plug against the plug, hold onto the cap so you're not gonna get it. Then what we'll do is I'm gonna go and press the button and see if we've got a spark. Yep, that's a good spark, no problems. So we know we've got fuel injection, we know we've got a spark, no problems. I'll refit the spark plug cap, move on. Okay, so the next part that we're going to be looking for is we're gonna be looking to make sure we've got the fuel pump works when we turn the ignition on and the fuel pump works when we stab the start switch, no problems. So turn the ignition on, can we hear a fuel pump? No, we can't. Stab it, stab the start switch, can we hear it? No, we can't hear it. So here we have a problem. This is, this is one thing that we're missing. So we've got four things that we've got to try and find. We've got to try and find fuel injection. We've got to find a spark. Does the fuel pump work when we turn the ignition on? No. Does it work when we stab it? No. So we have a fuel pump problem, something along the lines. It might not necessarily be the fuel pump that's a problem, but basically what we need to do is to find out why that fuel pump's not working. Okay, so we found out that the fuel pump isn't working. So on a Gen 1 bike, underneath the right-hand side, um, if you have a quick look on your workshop manual, it will show you where the block connector is for your fuel pump. Um, if you have a look on a Gen 2, it's just underneath the battery around here. If you look on a V4, it's just underneath the, uh, underneath the tank setup around here. So you can check what's going on with that one. So on a, a Gen 1, we know what the problem is. In fact, I can see what the problem is here. So we know exactly what's going on with it here. But basically, um, this is where the block connector is. This is where you would do some testing just to make sure. But we'll, uh, if you come down, we'll have a bit of a close up on this. We can see exactly what the problem is here. Okay. So we've got no fuel pump operation when we turn the ignition on and we've got no fuel pump when we actually stab the start switch. So we're coming to the block connector and I think we've actually found the problem here. So when it's actually been put on or when the tank's been put on in the past, the actual block connector isn't together. So if you have a quick look, it's just come apart. It's just come apart in my hands. Um, on these Gen 1s, it is quite common for them to, to actually burn or scar the, these, these wires here. If you have a quick look on the inside, you'll see this one's actually clean as a whistle. So this one's just not been put back on properly at some point. So if we put this back together again like that, we feel bad if it click in like that 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 I'm pretty sure is going to be our problem so I'll turn the ignition on all right fingers crossed okay so we're just going to turn the ignition on and yes we've got a fuel pump I don't know if that's picking up a microphone but we've got now got a fuel pump operation so we can hear that when it turns on um, and then we'll just try stabbing the start switch as well just so we know so literally all we're looking for is just a little little poke like that just to make sure because all we're trying to do is just see if we can hear the fuel pump working while the engine turns over so, yeah uh, hopefully you can hear that so we can hear what's going on yeah perfect so in this instance uh, we'll just give that a try and see if we can get that to start okay no problem so we're going to try uh, give this a try now because now we know we've got fuel injection we know it's working because we've tested with the led we've got a spark so we know we've tested with a spark plug on the side of the crankcase so we know what's going on and we didn't get a zap off it we now know that the actual fuel pump works when we turn the tank or when we turn the ignition on because we can hear it whirring and when you stab the starter switch we know that that's now buzzing so in theory we should be able to start this up and it should go there we go. 
happy days. So that's it, so we know exactly what was going on with that one. Literally, we just had a problem with the block connector here. So, in a uh, sort of, uh, just to recap, so we know exactly what's going on. I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible. Your bike's been sat over Christmas, problem, problem, come back to it, say for example, or it's been sat for a little while, for whatever reason, uh, and it's not working when you come back to it. It's just cranking uh, and not catching. There's four things that you need to try and look for. One, has it got a spark? Two, is it fuel injecting? Three, is the fuel pump working when you turn the ignition on? The fuel pump cranks or basically primes the system to put pressure in the fuel injection system for three to five seconds, dependent on the mat that's installed. And four, does it work when you actually just stab the start switch? So in other words, does it work when, you when the engine's turning over? It's easier just to literally stab the button so you can see what's going on. If you have all four of those, that engine in theory, should run, uh, and then you can. If not, you know exactly where you start to start looking. Like I said, if you haven't got a fuel injection, you know where to start. Right, I haven't got any fuel injection. Where do I start from there? Then it basically you're looking for you no know, spark. If I haven't got any spark, then I know I've not got a spark. So we know that that's a problem. So the logic is basically starting to work between us. If we're missing something, then we know where to start looking for that kind of thing. So what we're looking for when we ring up, I'm going to ask you: Have you got spark? Have you got fuel injection? Have you got the crank, uh, uh, sorry, have you got the fuel pump working when you turn the ignition on? And have you got, uh, basically, uh, the fuel pump working when you stab the start switch? If you've got all four of those, your bike will run. Okay, that's it. It's just a little quick tester just to sort of help you get sort of a, a little bit of diagnosis when you start working on your bike. If you've got any suggestions for any films that we need to be able to do in the future just to help you out, please just give us a quick shout, sales at apworkshops.co.uk. Um, if there's anything else that we can help you out with, please just, just email us again, sales at apworkshops.co.uk. Give us a call at the shop, no dramas whatsoever, we can help you out with that. Just want to say a, quick, a, sort of a massive thank you to our, uh, our sponsors, that's uh, Arai Helmets, RST Clothing, Motor Laws and GB Racing. You guys rock, thanks very, very much. A massive, massive thank you to all the people that are going online, www apworkshops.co.uk to our uh, to our sales or the e-commerce web platform if there's something on there that you can't find that you're looking for spares and accessories to your bike honestly just give us a quick shout no problems we're happy to help you once again thanks very much for everything that you do for us we really really appreciate it take care of yourself thanks very much